Hello and welcome to Templar Knight TV broadcasting on YouTube. You can also follow us through the Templar Knight blog as well as keeping up to date on Facebook and on Twitter. And this is a special edition looking at whether or not the Knights Templar got to America. Let's examine then whether there's any evidence that the Templars reached America 100 years before Christopher Columbus. I get exclusive access to Rosslyn Chapel, where some believe there are clues that the Knights did indeed set foot in the New World. And I go filming with the team from America Unearthed, presented by Scott Walter, in caves, treacherous caves near Weems in Scotland, where a strange carving suggests the Knights may indeed have crossed the Atlantic. Now I know, having uh, worked on my blog, The Knights Templar, for many years, that you are enthralled at the prospect that the Knights Templar reached America. So in this episode, I'm going to examine whether or not there's any truth to this. Our starting point is basically the end for the Knights Templar. In 1307, they're rounded up, the orders have gone out for their arrest. They are imprisoned in dungeons, they're tortured, and eventually they're burnt at the stake, including the Grand Master himself, Jacques de Molay. But there's a persistent theory that the Knights Templar managed to get some of their treasure that was in the Paris Temple, treasure that may have come from Jerusalem. They managed to get it onto carts and they took it down to the port of La Rochelle, where ships, waiting ships, set sail uh, around the coast of England, eventually ending up in Scotland. It's said that once the Templars arrived in Scotland, they were able to enjoy the protection of the Sinclair family. Now, the Sinclairs were the Earls of Orkney, a position that they owed to the King of Norway. And it's said that the Sinclair family were great friends and, and long-term allies of the Knights Templar that they'd known, for example, the first Grand Master, Hugh de Payne, and they helped the Templars to hide for years, possibly even decades, in Scotland in two locations that I'll talk about later in this episode. Now, it's alleged that Henry Sinclair, the Earl at the time, hatched a plan with the Templars to escape in a very decisive manner for a part of the world where the Catholic Church would never be able to catch up with them, the New World, which it's said through his Viking ancestors he knew all about. So around 1400, the Templars set sail with Henry Sinclair for America, possibly using Viking maps, maybe even maps dating back to the Phoenicians, according to one theory, and make their way, eventually landing at Nova Scotia. Once in the New World, they set about trying to build a society based on Templar principles, and evidence of their, uh, of their presence in America is often cited by two structures. Uh, one is the Newport Tower, which uh, supporters of the Templar theory claim is some kind of Templar fortification. Uh, detractors, however, claim that it's a 17th century windmill. And then there's the Westford Knight. Now, it's either a trick of the eye or it's a carving of a knight on a glacial boulder in Massachusetts. It's been hotly contested for over a 100 years what exactly this is. It's said that Henry Sinclair and the Templars, while they were in America, or for as long as they were in America, possibly forever, they struck up a friendship with a local Native American tribe, the Micmac. Uh, it's even said that the emblem of the Micmac incorporates a crucifix indicating their contact with the Templars. And it's even suggested that Henry Sinclair came to be worshipped as a god by the Micmac, though I think that theory has to be taken with a very large pinch of salt. And let's not forget, of course, the money pit on Oak Island, uh, a place where the Templars are believed to have buried huge amounts of treasure and, of course, the subject of an enormously successful documentary on history. Uh, and I've even appeared on a uh, Oak Island related podcast seen here, which, of course, I thoroughly recommend that you download as soon as possible. If the Knights Templar were in America, what eventually happened to them? Did they 
disappear into the mist? Or did they transmit their knowledge and their treasure down to the Freemasons? That's one theory, that the Freemasons knew how and where to access the Templar treasure and that this was used to fund the American Revolution in the 18th century. This, of course, presents the United States as essentially a Templar stroke Freemason project. And that's a theory that uh, developed in the 19th century. Incidentally, I should say it was an anti-Masonic theory, largely. But evidence to support that is normally given in the banknote uh, of, the, of the United States, the one dollar bill and the symbology, of course, on the back of it, the pyramid, the eye, even the number of feathers on the eagle is cited as evidence of Masonic connections to the Founding Fathers. And one commentator even has the Knights Templar bringing the Holy Grail to the United States, and that it may be in Washington, D.C., a city planned, of course, along Masonic principles, and that the Holy Grail may eventually have somehow ended up in the lamp held aloft by the Statue of Liberty. Now, there's an intriguing thought. Now, I often get asked in all seriousness whether I have evidence to support any of this, so I have to uh, disappoint you now and say that I have no ancient map, no secret document that supports any of this theory whatsoever. Uh, however, I'd be very keen to know your views, particularly those of you in the United States uh, who may be Templars or Masons, what you think about this theory and whether or not the Knights did indeed cross the Atlantic. Now, the grandson of Henry Sinclair, William Sinclair, went on to build Rosslyn Chapel in the 15th century. And you'll remember that place from the closing scenes of the Da Vinci Code. Um, and some believe that some of the carvings inside the Rosslyn Chapel evidence that the Templars got to America. For example, they, they show flora and fauna that look like maize, in, in the opinion of, of these people. Now, I got exclusive access to Rosslyn Chapel last year, had a little walk around and filmed on your behalf. And I went down into the basement sacristy where there's some intriguing carvings and a suggestion of a map and possibly the star that's called L'America by some theorists, uh, a star that guided the Templars and Henry Sinclair to America. But anyway, here is my report. It's a bit of a whistle-stop tour, this. Behind me here is the so-called Apprentice Pillar. Beautiful pillar, quite unique, very bizarre design. Some people believe it's Viking-influenced. Uh, there is a story that the Mason, the junior Mason, sorry, who carved it, was killed by the master mason who was furious that he'd, uh, he'd carved it without his consent. And then what I'm going to do very quickly now is take you down into the crypt. Well, it's not the crypt, sacristy actually. Sacristy, I always find that word hard to say. Sacristy. And we'll go down these steep steps. Very careful. They didn't have health and safety in the Middle Ages. And I'm holding onto a rail there. Um, and here we are down in the sacristy. Now this is very interesting because there are all sorts of strange carvings down here and a lot of them are five-pointed stars uh, which have all sorts of meaning uh, representing the five wounds of Christ, representing Venus, the evening star, so on. But the carving that gets people the most excited, I hope you can see this behind me, is this kind of what looks like a tower some people say it looks like a 1970s electricity pylon and there's kind of cup shape at the top and my finger's not doing this properly but there's a cup shape at the top and there is then a, a star here i think you're going to have to believe me uh, which some people believe is the evening star anyway what some people believe is that this carving here is a kind of navigational map or uh, that it uh, represents latitudes uh, depicting Jerusalem, Rosslyn, um, let me get this right, Orkneys and Iceland. Uh, and this all relates to the Sinclair family, who were the, the, the family here, and uh, a narrative that they protected the Templars after they were put on trial in 1307, and that they helped them to hide out in Scotland and then make their way to the New World with all their loot and treasure and possibly the Holy Grail. Some people believe that the Holy Grail, I'm leaving the sacristy behind me now, 
that the Holy Grail uh, was actually here in Rosslyn for a little while. Maybe it's still here. Some people believe it was built as a Grail Chapel specifically. And there are stories as well that Hugh de Payne, the first Templar Grand Master, came here with four trunks of treasure from Jerusalem and that he buried them under the nave. And some people believe they may still be there. And that they are sort of held in place, impacted with sand brought from Jerusalem. Anyway, uh, Rosslyn authorities don't agree with that story and they certainly haven't let anybody excavate. So just taking the church, taking the church a bit. You see the ceiling there, very ornate, lovely ceiling. As I say, this sort of ornateness, as you can imagine, was frowned on during the Protestant Reformation, which is why the church was closed for a long time. And uh, in fact, I believe it was used as stables under Cromwell. And it only really resurfaced in the 19th century with the kind of Gothic revival, interest in the Middle Ages. Unfortunately, or fortunately, or depending on your viewpoint, there was a lot of restoration in the 19th century. I mean, the, the medieval fabric is still basically here. Uh, it hasn't changed that much, but you have to kind of learn to distinguish between the medieval original fabric and some of the uh, 19th century interpretations of medieval. But there we are, you can see it all you're getting it all there behind me. And if I turn gradually, you then get, you'll get the altar. There's the altar behind me there. Okay, and uh, somewhere behind me is the a prince's pillar. So this, this church, of course, shrouded in mystery and conspiracy theories, all sorts of conspiracy theories, that John the Baptist's head was kept here, that the embalmed head of Jesus was here, uh, and uh, the official guide was telling me today she gets emails every week, all sorts of stuff sent to her about what Rosslyn signifies, what's hidden here, why are they keeping these secrets, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, regardless, I'd recommend a visit to this place. I'm very privileged to be here at night on my own, a bit spooky. Find out if there's any ghosts in a moment. Um, but, yeah, do come along. It's, uh, you just get to Edinburgh, and it's... Um, 20, 25 minute bus ride, or if you're rich, taxi ride out here, and uh, it's well worth a visit. Now, that visit to Rosslyn was with forensic geologist and broadcaster Scott Walter, who also presents America Unearthed, a fantastic documentary series I suggest you watch. I appeared in one episode. Exodus of the Templars last year and after we'd been to Rosslyn we went to explore some treacherous caves at Weems in Scotland and Scott was looking out for a particular carving which he believes shows that the Templars did indeed make that crossing across the sea to America. It's a carving he's seen in the United States and he saw the same carving in Scotland. Now you have to watch the documentary to get the full details. I'm not going to give away the plot as it were, um, but very interesting, intriguing theory from Scott Walter and the team at America Unearthed. Now that was a bit of a breakneck speed gallop through the whole theory about the Templars reaching America. If you've got any views or comments, please get in touch at the email appearing on screen right now. I'm also more than happy to hear your uh, your ideas for future episodes. And even if you yourself want to make an appearance, please do. Uh, in the meantime, though, be good and non nobis domine.